Okay, let's look at the stability program for the jackup brake. Today, I'm going to brief you guys a little bit of the characteristic of the jackup stability. This is the uh, elevated condition. So the rig is skidded up and ready for drilling. And then you look at the pinion load. As this is just a demo, okay? So I did not put in any figure. This is just a figure that without anything, uh, you can see the, the load of the pinion is all uneven at the moment. What we normally interested with is the, the variable deck load. The, the reason I explain on this video is most of the people on board, they are always arguing about the variable deck load. So why can't we take so much uh, variable deck load during the tow? So as you can see, there's a light ship weight. It's really important program and this is the uh, light ship correction. The light ship correction means that every single thing that they modify on the rig, they, they install a new equipment permanently install on the rig where they need to include in this light ship correction column. The reason is if you don't do this correctly in the long run, you're going to have a lot of discrepancy during the rig move because the rig will be like tilted to one side, you know, senget senget a bit. Then they start to worry, oh, why the rig is not even, okay? And they cannot find out what is the problem. Like let's say for a 10 years checkout, they have done a lot of modification uh, over the years. And I, I've been to some of the rig, they never even look at that at all. The light shift correction is zero. How can it be zero if your rig already like 10 years old? impossible that you don't have lag shift correction at all. So this is one of the things that you guys need to look into it during rig move and before rig move. Especially, uh, I think this subject, not just for Bushmaster, I would say is best for the drilling supervisor to know about this subject. Because most of the time before the rig move, they always clunk about and Oh, why we cannot carry cement? And why we cannot carry mud in the mud pit? Why we cannot do this? Why we cannot do that? Because there is not enough room anymore on the rig to allow to carry additional weight because it was not factored in. Some of them, they did not even plan ahead. They need to plan ahead with the bush master even like one month before the rig move. When it comes to close to rig move, you don't need to worry about whether your rig is overloaded during the tow. You just need to coordinate well with bush master, especially when it comes to bulk material, bedrock, bentonite, you know, your cement. The bulk tank normally install at the bow. Your mud pit also at the bow. And the rig design, the bow is always very light. Of course, it's, it's fine that that you can carry a little bit of bulk for the tow but not too excessive if you are too excessive loading out the bulk as well as the mud in the mud pit then you can see the rig is actually trimmed to the bulk so the reason the bulk is always light is let's say now you start towing the tow boat will pull like 50 tons then eventually the bow also will submerge and go down further and further if without doing anything the bow is already heavy and trimmed to the bow and just imagine if the tow boat pull and it will go down further and then which is not safe anymore because the free board i mean from the water level to the deck come lesser and lesser and lesser because we don't want the water to rush over to the deck that's why there's always worry us as a rig mover and because of people they don't understand the importance of the stability of the rig it's not that we don't want to carry the additional bow or or mud in the mud pit it's just that it will affect a lot especially a long tow you know extended field move you know, from east to west malaysia and vice versa so this is a long move so we need to do it correctly before we move even though even a short move field move still you need to make sure that the freeboard is have sufficient freeboard and within the stability criteria so then you if you look at cantilever weight and all this mean deck weight on the deck right current operator is actually recording the weight that offloaded from the boat then you write it down and then they come back with a list of paper of the equipment on board and pass it to the bush master so the bush master can key in where is the weight where is the location you know you can see lcg tcg vcg and this is all the placement of the weight on the rig you can see from this diagram can be here can be here can be here can be here can be, here, can be anywhere of course normally it's only within the pipe right there right sack storage which is always a problem because the rig is towing from infield towing right it's still on operation of course they keep a lot of chemicals everything in the sack room they don't want to remove it because if they're going to use it again for the next job right so the the trouble that we have always on the sack room is they like to stack it like three tiers you know i mean three tiers is a bit too high you know i would say everything on first tier then you will know that even though the rig rock and roll having a rough weather during the tow and we know that the weight is not going to shift a lot if you put like two tiers it can be toppled you know how, how are you going to secure on the second tier how are you going to secure on the third tier that's almost impossible you know we need to be more practical in the sense of planning of rig move sometimes they try to be like oh no worry we will secure it nicely and end of the day they will not be able to do it because of the next operation so sack room you need to plan ahead you cannot 
wait until uh, once we near to rig move and then you start to see oh everything in the set room is like three tiers high stacking up right so that is not a good practice if you have three tiers two tiers the best is everything in one tier. so for main deck okay like well logging units smart logging units you know everything is already there normally they have welded it and no issue with the c fastening so try not to put the equipment outside from the pipe deck the moment you put it outside from the pipe deck it is very difficult to secure and then the oim on board also don't like to weld the deck you know because the moment they start to weld the deck just to put a stopper you know the top of the deck you still can maintain you cut it off you grind off and you paint it over properly but how about the below the tank you know so below the tank how are you going to paint once you weld it you're going to start corrosion best is to keep with in the pipe there and machinery area uh, obviously engine room normally is okay they don't put so many things there because living quarters you need to secure your personal belongings and cantilever also you know you need to just put within the pipe bag on the cantilever don't put somewhere outside and you know, on the walk okay also okay rig floor variable normally is a setback okay setback is always the main trouble for us they like to ask us oh can we keep drip pipe can we keep drip pipe can we keep the bha on the derrick and then you have to ask yourself keeping those setback on the rig floor talk about BHA one style of BHA how many times already let's say a drill pipe five stands and how are you going to secure normally they use what they use a target around it wrap it. and you ask yourself is it this is a standard practice that we secure something so heavy by just wrapping around the target wire and and it's safe that's not possible right how can a target wire can hold Hold five stand of drip pipe. No way, no way you can hold it. It's best to lay down everything and put it on that. If you have seen one video, probably you guys have worked with me before. I've shown you guys a video that that is one rig. You can see all the drip pipe falling apart, drop on the rig floor, top drive damage, everything damage. So what will cost you on the next operation? We have all this damage. Can't continue drilling, right? So everything will be suspended, and then that's it. You know, your spread cost will increase. Everything will increase. It's just because of you want to put a five stand of drip pipe the best is regardless of what location lay it off put it on deck that's it of course i'm um, as a rig mover i'm saying it's easy but for the people that was planning for drilling it's not easy for them to understand but this is about the safety of the rig floor so you don't want to damage the rig floor and how miscellaneous cantilever tank sand trap and all this so all this weight need to be through the okay now i show you the the stability that we always counter check based on the Bushmaster stability program report the maximum allowable jacking variable deck load that allow for the rig move for this rig is 2270 tons dry variable deck load if you don't know what is dry variable deck load what is liquid variable deck load you can refer to my uh, previous cartoon video which is on this link you can click on it and learn so you see the dry variable is 700 and the liquid variable is 1000 plus so normally the liquid is more than the dry because we don't want to dump all the drill water the weight that we have to carry because drill water we can use it for cleaning you can use it for mixing mud for the next location of course if you can reduce it a little bit more then it would be great then you can have more dry variable carry along and they only carry about 1746 metric tons where you still left about 500 tons carry this is good because at least you, you don't have so much equipment on board that you need to be secure. If imagine you fully loaded up 2,000 plus and you hit by the weather and also maybe there's a location there's a punch for sure. When this thing happen, you will foresee a lot of damage on the rig because jack up itself is full of machinery. Every day here is machinery. You got drains, you got third parties, logging units, which is so easy to get damage if all those heavy loads start to move ship and here and there. Right, and this is one of the best uh, float condition as you can. And see this is the draft that I read on the lake. Okay, look at the draft mark. So right now you can see it's about 5.65 like that. Okay. Which is very close to the calculated draft on the stability. Well done, well done. This is very very good. Good job. So the bulk is 5.7. Obviously the bulk is heavy because of the bulk. It's man, bad right, man tonight. And you can see towing draft 6.6 .6 because we put the legs down below the hull by a meter just to make sure that mud not compressed to the hull and damage the hull. So this is a good practice. This is a hull fixed load, the light ship 8000 plus and rig floor, light ship, rig floor 1009, additional light ship 7.3. See this is kind of very fishy, you know what I mean? In only seven ton and this rig is about i would say five years old six years old right six years old right so six years seven tons still on the rig mm, you know 
normally you say like 20 30 tons that is more makes sense to me but anyway this have been highlighted to them of course they have done their work also 7.3 but it's not much so i don't believe it's only 7.3 more than that so this is a lake weight plus the spark and full 6009 and the variable that we carry on board is 7 1746 and addition ballast we don't use it because most of the real tank is dry so total weight up displacement calculated is 18756.4 and this is based on actual displacement of manual reading on the leg well to draft so that is about 10 tons different which is so good of course put the possible cost of marine growth on lake there's a lot of marine growth which is not calculated of course this 10 ton could be from other factor as well so this is the lcg tcg bcg free surface ground between transfers and maximum of kg, kg so if you can plan ahead you try not to keep anything in the mud pit why because Mud pit itself is not a confined tank like a preload tank. In the past, they, they try to convince, not say convince, they try to, to me is they're cheating themselves. Okay, you fill up the full, you know, fill up the full of the mud pit and you have no free surface effect in the mud pit. Have you ever seen a mud pit can enclose? The hatches on the mud pit itself is not concealed. If the rig is listing to one side on the other rolling, you know, you, if you, the mud pit is full, it's going to spill all over the place. If you start to spill all over the place, you know what is ha going to happen next. If this is OBM, you can imagine the OBM start to flow over into the mud palm room. It's going to be a disaster for you. You're going to have a lot of cleanup for rig. Try to empty of all the mud pit because there's no way in the mud pit you can conceal it. No way. It's better to keep the mud pit dry. Otherwise, at the end of the drilling campaign, you're going to be clunkable, you know, nervous. Oh, that's too much mud in I need to transfer back to the vessel and patch master say no we cannot carry any more mud because it's too heavy on the bow blah blah and start fighting on the rig so if you can plan ahead make sure the mud is all clean and dry and there is no more argument you know the moment you finish drilling I mean of course talking is easy yeah? to plan it is something that you need to think about because for, as for us as a rig mover if you look at the mud pit and some of the mud pit also have the dumb walk and some of them they are not which is good and you know that there is no way the mud pit will get contaminated some of the, the rig they have a dump valve below right? and connected to master dump valve then only can dump so what if during the watertight integrity and you start to have leaks coming into the mud pit so what are you going to do the hydrostatic pressure start to force some water through a, a leaking valve that's it you know then you start to contaminate all your obm as well and on the other hand we can't verify whether the tank is leaking or not the moment you put mud in the mud pit if there's a minor leak and we don't know because the watertight integrity sometimes is about two hours only you know so we can't see whether it's water coming especially if you're going for long rig move and it's going to be a problem for the crew on board if you noted the leaks getting worse and worse and worse along the way mud pit is always a problem remember and the uh, bulk tank so i think that's all for today i hope you guys like this video for those who uh, are not yet subscribed to our channel please do and subscribe to the channel smack it just to support me if you can share this video to others that even better make sure you turn on the notification bell as well so the moment we upload a new video you can see the straight away that's it from me today thank you